the Sphinx is saving with Omar's childhood from Fijio. And, uh, well, he, he gathers up as he sweeps, left behind chunks of hashish, and centralizes those into one spot near the door. And, uh, if his guests are staying another night, uh, he sweeps, uh, but then hangs out. I mean, the hangout growth can go on for hours. So I've been travel stories, listening to the latest tape cassettes, yeah, moody blues, you know. It, uh, takes a few moments to clean the room. Might take hours to, uh, before the fun dies down a little bit, yeah. Well, say the freaks have already checked out. Uh, yeah, he, he uh, you know, gathers all the garments. I mean, there's things left behind. And, you know, hippie clothes, uh, sometimes Western garments, uh, the paraphernalia for hashish. They will be headed for Iran, so they got to clean up their act. Starting here, but especially in Herat. Uh <laughs> Which makes Sphinx smile. He thinks of the Queen of Chitral in her room upstairs in the Bezat Hotel. And that's what she does. That's how she sustains uh, her stay there. She recycles leftover garments from the travelers. Uh, and, uh, of course, she speaks Pashtu also. And then <laughs> resells them. Well, she trades them for hashish, so when the people come in, it's called the hands and knees room, because people get so stoned they can't stand up anymore. Uh, so the hashish is free, the hook is free, and, you know, so there's this energy feedback loop. Uh, you, you've heard me sp speak about that before. Oh, the Queen of Chitral? Mm-hmm. Oh, Sphinx, huh? She'll be coming through in a few days. And uh, without that worrisome extraordinary complex hashish uh, expedition purchase smuggling Suez Canal uh, delivering it to Amsterdam that's gone his sweep and weep yoga comes first so uh, he and the Queen now uh, we know you know commercial uh, interaction will be able to be together pure they hang out. Yeah. Well, Sphinx, he flows with his bhakti heart yoga. And as he sweeps, he, 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 he softly chants to himself, Sweet and weak. Sweet In infinite intonations, keys, different musical sounds, and uh, but he says, well, "You know what? Mm. Still can't press a one gram hashish." Omar, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, single-minded Sphinx sweeps on through the early minute. Oh. He's wrapping up for the day. I mean, his yoga well, it starts around 7. And, you know, there's only 24 rooms. And there's, there's really no furniture. There's no, like, any running water, <laughs> bathrooms, uh, microwaves to clean. You sweep the floor. You put fresh water in the hookah. You dust off the charpoy bed. <laughs> you know, uh, low maintenance. So by 9... Uh, yeah, he's, he's free for the rest of the day and evening. Well, in the evening, he has a few more things to do. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, he's on his last room. He's getting around nine and uh, rooming out the closet. This is it for the morning. And, oh, oh what's under those newspapers? Oh, there, there's two, there's two uh, kilograms of hashish. Uh, I've got them broken up. Uh, what? So he... Takes it to Peace Ollie, like, what's up with this? What do you want it? Or, you know, what happened was a, a couple, an older couple uh, from uh, 
near the Helmand River. They stayed overnight there because they're going up to Ghazni, south of Kabul, for the wedding of their niece. And uh, apparently the wife uh, kind of freaked out um, and, and harassed her husband. Could you show a little class and just not bring along this back oasis provincial shit? You're going to embarrass us? All in front of the relatives? Don't drag this along. So the timid and uh, chastened husband, yeah, he uh, he kind of broke it up and threw it in the closet and uh, covered it up a little bit with some newspapers. Well, um, well, Ollie has a look, one look at he grimaces. Ah, where did this come from? Ah, dry, moldy, throw it out. <laughs> this this botched back oasis shit could ruin my reputation. Well, okay. Well, during the evening meal, the Afghan family, you know, Ali, his wife and children, they put a tablecloth on the carpeted floor and then they put the dishes over the... Uh, Kind of the tablecloth, only there's no table. It's just the floor. They live and they eat on the floor. They're not into this, like, Western-style furniture, <laughs> you know, that, that I grew up with. And I've kind of sat on the floor for the rest of my life after living so long in Afghanistan. I, I work on the floor, on my bed. My bed is my desk. You know, I put up a, you know, I put my laptop on a pillow, <laughs> you know. I never got over preferring to live on the floor. Well, that was Sphinx. He won't take any rupees for his yoga in the name of his guru, but, you know, those endless hashish cookies, that's a perk. I mean, the biggest pancakes and laced with dates and cashews from India. Mm hmm. Well, uh, tonight, hmm, Sphinx is awakened. In the tantric sense, because a lovely teenage hippie chick, Ramabiza, yeah, Spanish, Mirabella, yeah, uh, she's drifted solo in transit through Afghanistan towards Kathmandu, yeah, and oh, Dolphin recognizes him uh, from the hippie bonfire uh, in Crete, the Matala hippie caves of Crete, or oh. And, oh, yeah, at the story time in his uh, Ottoman salon, salon on the roof terrace of the Guhani Hotel. The hippie revolution. Free love. Did you get in on that? <laughs>